So today we're talking about the Apostle John and what his life was like before and after Jesus and how it changed. Um, John was a fisherman, uh, so he had a pretty steady job, pretty well paid. Uh, he had a house in Jerusalem. So why would we follow? So why would he follow Jesus? Um, I want to start off with that point. So it says earlier in Scripture that uh, when Jesus taught in the synagogues, the people were astounded because he taught as one having authority. So maybe that's why John followed uh, Jesus, or maybe he saw something and was like, "Hey, I want to receive glory and praise for this." Or maybe he was just astounded and saw that Jesus was the Messiah. Because if we look at uh, Andrew, he, when he went to tell Peter about Jesus, he said, we have found the Messiah. So maybe John knew that Jesus was the Messiah at that point. John, was the, uh, John and James are brothers and they were the sons of Zebedee, also called sons of thunder. Why are they recorded as being sons of thunder? Uh, I referenced that to Luke 9, 54, when they were passing through Samaria and they asked Jesus if, if they should call down fire from heaven as a prejudice against the Samaritans. Uh, so there we can see kind of their attitude, or John's specific attitude, um, kind of his aggression and his prejudice towards uh, the Samaritans. So scholars believe that John the Apostle uh, wrote the Gospel of John along with the first, the second, and third John, the letters in the book of Revelations. Um, so in the Gospel of John, John is referred to as the one Jesus loved. So. We can see that Jesus and John had a very tight connection by looking at that gospel. Specifically, if you look at the Last Supper, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, saying that one of them will betray him, the one that Jesus loved leaned back and asked him, "Who is the one that is going to betray you?" And Jesus said, "The one that I give the, the one that I give bread to." And I'm pretty sure that's John 13:21 or 25. So they had a very uh, close connection. John was also at the crucifixion of Jesus. He was there at the cross where all, well, all the other disciples ran and fled away. But John was there. So John and Jesus had a very close connection. They had a very close relationship. It was thought that John would live forever because if you look at John 21, 20, I think. If you look in the last chapter of John, Peter and Jesus are having a conversation, and Peter asks Jesus, well, what about John? And Jesus replies, if I want him to live forever, what is that to you? But then it goes on to say that some of the apostles thought that he would live forever, but that's not actually what happened. Jesus said only if he wants John to live forever. So John actually did not live forever. John was also exiled to the island of Patmos, where there he wrote some of the letters in the book of Revelation. So what can we take away from John's life? We can see in John's life, uh, the transformation, if we look back at Luke 9, 54, how he was very aggressive and kind of prejudiced to, if you look at his letters in the book of John, you can see how he talked about love and encouraged love. Uh, he focuses a lot on love in the book of John. And he also encourages the churches in his letters. So we can see a life transformation that spending time with Jesus and having that close relationship with Jesus Christ, we grow in Christ's love and then we have that love in ourselves that we can pour out to others. That's something that we can take away from John.